So I purchased the Blackmagic Speed Editor about a few months ago and I purchased it to see how this would work into my workflow of using DaVinci Resolve because in my opinion I wasn't using it to the full features it had to offer. For me the first step I would always do is jump into the edit tab and I wanted to start to use the cut tab. So the main thing with this is you have to take the time to learn it. You can't just take this out of the box and expect to learn it. You have to really make some mistakes before you really understand how this thing works. I always say this when I'm talking about editing and tips that this product right here will not make you a better editor it'll just help you with your workflow and it'll make things maybe a little bit faster and ultimately if it works for you it works for you if it doesn't it doesn't for me it's work for me i'm going to talk about what works for me and how i use these things and the keys and buttons i use to make the editing process a little bit smoother and streamlined for me if you're an editor who edits a lot of A-roll and edits a lot of B-roll, then this thing's for you. The beauty with DaVinci Resolve is each tab, and I'm very excited that I've been able to work it into my workflow seamlessly with this thing. So I'm not able to show you this edit in real time because I'm editing it as we speak, but what I can do is show you a sneak peek teaser of what my new studio looks like and show you exactly how I edit that using the DaVinci Resolve Speed Editor. So this is my home studio. This is where the magic happens of what goes on and what goes into this channel. It's been months and months of preparation to bring this studio to life. It's been a lot of money and a lot of time to basically make this my dream studio and make it personal to me and have personality traits that are special to me. So all in all, this is my sanctuary. This is my happy place. This is where I get to create content and tell stories every single day. And every time I walk in here, I'm extremely blessed to know that I've been able to build this. So the first step is syncing up all of the A-roll. I shoot all of my A-roll with a separate audio source, so I have to line it all up first. It's time to grab the speed editor, hop back into the cut tab, and get to work. There are five keys I use most that help me when it comes to cutting my A-roll. Trim in, moving in an existing clips in point. Trim out, moving out an existing clips out point. Split which is cutting a clip in half, and then ripple delete, deleting the selected clip altogether. And then finally, the wheel, moving in and around my timeline. This scroll wheel is your best friend throughout this entire process because you will never want to go back, and I can promise you that. Next up is the fun part. Make sure all your footage you are pulling is located in the same bin. The source key will be your best friend in this process as it is the way of jumping from the time timeline to your specific footage bin. The constant tool across all functions is the scroll wheel. And specifically in this function, you'll be using the shuttle, the jog, and the scroll. You'll find yourself in the jog the most, but scroll and shuttle if you need to move around fast within the timeline. Setting an in and out. When I set my in point and I set my out point, that's ultimately the section that'll be moved into my timeline. And then place on top. This is the most important function within this process as this will layer your footage over your A-roll. And when you start to layer B-roll over B-roll, it will just keep creating new video layers within the timeline. What the roll function does is move the transition point of wherever the clips are meeting. This is best used when you want to adjust the start or end of layered clips on the timeline. Trim in will adjust the end point of the clip to the right of the transition point highlighted in the timeline. Trim out will adjust the out point of the clip to the left of the transition point highlighted in the timeline. And then undo, which is the escape key. Double tap the escape to undo any previous action. This again will be your best friend within the cut process. And just like that, it's time to grab your keyboard and jump over to the edit tab and really put the polish on the edit. From there, you move down the line, bring your story to life, and eventually be able to hit that render button. So my final thoughts on the DaVinci Resolve Speed Editor is try it out. If you don't like it, return it. At the end of the day, if this makes your job seamless, if it makes it easier, use it. If you're someone who jumps into the edit tab and you do not care about the cut tab, don't use this. 
This is supposed to be a tool for you as an editor, as a filmmaker, as a creator. And that's ultimately what it's for. But if you purchase one of these and it's not working for you, I suggest just taking the time to try to learn it. Do a few test edits here and there and see how you can work this into your everyday workflow. And it'll make the editing process a little bit more fun along the way. I'm gonna be editing all my videos with this thing, so there's gonna be some more videos on this, DaVinci Resolve as a whole. And I'm a huge fan of Black Magic and how they listen to their creators and create things that the creators want. So with that, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and comment down below if you're a DaVinci Resolve user and you think you're gonna test one of these out. But with that, I'll see you guys in the next one.